It's been fifty years since the War of the Wilds, and still nothing grows on the Kindlelands. The exact day the flora of the world stood up and ravaged the cities of the Greenor Peninsula is lost to the ages. After the Great Fire tore its way from west to east, turning the land barren and fallow, the otherworldly patrons, the guides, and the great cities of the Kindlelands worked together in their own way to bring a kind of peace to a war-torn people. It is a gentle, delicate balance, and something or someone threatens it. Welcome to Another Path. My name is Chase, and I'll be your GM. Today, our heroes return triumphant to Concentre, only to face down the demons of C-34. If you want to support the show, check out our merch store, available at anotherpathpodcast.com, and our Patreon for persistent help to us and rewards to you. Thank you to our backers Kat, Kim, and Zan for their continued support. This is an excellent time to check out the Patreon because we have just hit a few of our goals there. As those plans firm up, you can keep an ear out here for details, but as always, our patrons will be the first to know everything. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy your trip down another path. The three of you are standing together in the ruins of the sewers beneath ground. It is still cold and damp and dank. The room is largely filled with corpses that you've just made. Yeah. Um, notably absent from the corpse pile is Cenus, um, Mordecai's newly discovered uncle. Gasp! Salix Sabolwerk paces the room in front of him and then uh, looks up to the three of you. Uh... The others of the, uh... The other captives are in the next room. They're fine. All right. Deep deep breaths. Oh, deep well, breaths. That's, that's good. Do we need to go let them out, or...? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. We should get... We should get... Brandon, are you okay? Oh, shit, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, all right. Oh, jeez. Oh, yes, geez. Brandon and I will oh. see to the other captives. Ha, 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 ha. And, and oh jeez okay let's get him out of there good work laszlo go get him absolutely oh hey laszlo uh um, yes? just uh watch out that's where the bear went to oh yes i had not forgotten cool is hey is that other guard still tied up or the cultist that we didn't kill yeah that guy i was about to kill him but someone stopped me he's tied up and he's in right up there next to Cenus. you've kind of shifted them together Cool. I'll keep an eye on these two. Shifted them together? Yeah, no, I I know what I did. Because we're shifters, that's the joke. Yes. No one else was laughing, so I figured I'd explain it. Ha, Thank ha, you. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you. Very encouraging comedic atmosphere you've set up for me, Zach and Ryan. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> well, your, your video was really lagging, so I was confused. Well, just don't look at yeah. me and listen to me. Just listen to me. You never listen to me anymore. I'm no. sorry. Anyway. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you. Okay, so vis-a-vis -vis telepathic bear. Yes. The fuck? I told you they were real. I, <clears throat> I mean, I told you I, they were real. What happened to your voice there? Oh, uh, I just had a frog in my throat, sir. <clears> throat> oh. There we are. Oh, okay. So where did it go? This way. I do believe. Uh, hey, Br Brandon. Yeah? Brandon, do you know much about where you are right now? Uh, not really. I didn't know this was all down here. Okay, never mind. Uh -huh. I'm concerned if there's a way out that's not a ladder. Because I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that bear won't be able to climb that ladder we came down. What ladder? I came in through the mines. Ah, oh, dunk. that makes sense. I bet. Oh, S wait, a guys. What if? Are you having a moment, guys? This could be really bad. Remember all those mines that Mayor King didn't want us to go into? Sure. I think we're in those mines right now. Hmm. I bet it's all connected. I bet we're closer to town than we should be, and I bet, um, well. Which way's the town? 
because I'm going to guess that the bear is going to smell food and go More that brains. way. Brandon points up. Nice. Thank you, Brandon. You're very helpful. <laughs> I'm an educated man. <laughs> <laughs> Can y'all take a second to just imagine having this man for a teacher, for as an educator? As like Today your, your third grade learn about teacher. The alphabet. <laughs> Brandon's the type of dude that like in the street, you know, he's unsure of himself, but like when he's in his teacher zone, okay. he knows what's going on and like <laughs> hits his stride. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's time for me to teach you all your time tables. <laughs> he kind of reminds me of that one guy from uh, Monsters, Inc. The, you're making him lose his focus. Um, oh, okay. there's, a, there's a reference. Good one. Yeah, right? I love those guys. But so if uh, we're down, so does this mean that the mayor's in on this and we're going to have to go kill a mayor now? If he told us not to come in here and it turns out there's cultists in here, you think he knew? Uh, I don't think so. Well, I haven't seen him down here, but we're not really supposed to go in the mines. They've been, they've been off limits for like my entire life. That's why I went in them after like the kids started hearing stuff. Uh, I'm not the bravest, but it, it was the pattern start. You know, I couldn't ignore it for that long. You happy with your choice of voice there, Chase? <laughs> Not at all. I think it's probably just a thing that the mines are just generally dangerous, and I mean, this is just part of the reason why. I sincerely hope you're correct. Okay, I want to go over to my uncle real quick. Uh, is he is he still bound? He is bound, um, okay. but he doesn't look so good, and neither does yeah. the other guy. I'm going to take a knee next to him. Mm-hmm. Hey. So what exactly were you guys doing here? Dad told me that you were doing something with uh, Mavo. We were... <sighs> Fuck. No point in hiding it now. I'd advise oh. not. We were... Uh, we were going to use the water down here to burrow further into the mountains. Wow. Get underneath that big fucking tower you've got in the mountains there and uh, bring it down. Maybe cut our way in. Oh, shit. That's actually a really good plan. That's actually a really good plan, Uncle Jesus. Who is Jesus? Shut up, Laszlo. All glory to Mavo. Yeah. We had the artifact and everything. It was going well. Uh, art, art, artifact? And he just kind of gestures his head over towards the altar. Oh, you guys... Oh, there was a thing over there, wasn't there? Should we, uh, should we bust mm-hmm. that thing up? It was like some sort of, like... I forget. There's a bowl? Uh, there's an altar. A fur-covered altar. I'm on it! And I'm gonna go... <laughs> I'm gonna go look at it. Um, with, okay. With my special eyes... Okay, yeah, that's right. You're you're temporarily seeing in the darkness eyes. Well, no, yeah, my I mean, notes. I mean, not even those. Just mean like my my eldritch like detect, detect magic. Eyes. Oh yes, my breath. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, my notes from last session stop at telepathic fucking bear and my fucking uncle. So <laughs> <laughs> good. Glad to know you were in the moment with me then. Excellent. Yeah. You go on over there and you find the altar. It's it's right there in the middle of the fucking room. Um, it is covered in furs, but now everything is really wet because, uh, that giant ball of water was floating over it and it dissipated. Yeah. And it's pretty simple to see what he's talking about. Sitting on the altar, um, tipped over onto its side is a tiny, about a six inch big stone hippo. Sorry? One more again. A stone hippo. It is a six-inch tall stone hippo. Here's my question: This, uh huh, the stone hippo. It's yes. style. However, it is uh-huh. carved. Sure. Is it at all reminiscent of that weird rat I found, or mouse that I found a while back that had the frying pan carved into it? Roll me. A, let's go ahead and call it an insight check. Oh, boy. <laughs> Wait, we roll like dice on this show? 
That is 15, 12 plus 3. Yeah, you can see that. You can see that. Um, I'm going to specialize. What do I get? You get Conjuration. My other one, the rat gave me Divine, yes? Divine. It was yes. Divine. All right, I need to spend some time with that bad boy and figure out what it does. Okay. Um, But that I okay. can do that like on the trip back to Concentre, like in the wagon. Absolutely. Um, what do you do with the hippo? Um... Am I getting anything like touch it bad from it? No. Am I getting anything from the furs? No. All right. I grab a fur. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There I you wrap go. Wrap up the hippo. Wrap it up. Nothing can happen if it's wrapped up. Excellent. I'm going to go ahead and say at this point, uh, so this hippo that you have just received is our first of hopefully many Patreon-made items. Yeah! I got it! This tiny stone hippo, tiny six inches tall, was made by Cat, and its oh. uh, properties will be revealed in time. Yay! Oh, no. I'm so excited now. That's awesome. This is super cool. I'm terrified. Thanks. It's a plot point, too. Thanks, Cat. Hey, Zach. Yeah. Good job. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, good looking out. Seeing Laszlo having... God, it's so weird to refer to you as two different characters. <laughs> it's a hippo! <laughs> <laughs> what's... Quick question. What's a hippo? Some sort of animal. <laughs> I'll okay. talk to you about it later. Is that like a dog? Exactly like a dog. Let's it's go. It's a dog. I, okay. I just want to point out what this means real quick, is that somewhere down the line, Mordecai now has a visual reference for what a hippo is, and I can turn into one eventually. You can turn into yeah. one. Yeah. They're so fast. Um, They're so strong. Yeah. Um, Cat, I blame you. Okay, I, I turn back to- You are going to, to win so many belly flop contests. Hell yeah. I'm going to turn back to Uncle, Uncle Shifter real quick. One last question then. The bear- did you bring it here? Did it always live here? What's the deal with the bear? Well, I didn't find it here. That's for damn sure. Did it find <sighs> you? Well, the bear part of it did. We made the rest. Oh, you son of a bitch. We're very good at what we do. Apparently, God. Can you think of better protection? Apparently you can, because I don't know where the fuck it went. And as you see him getting worked up, uh, he, like, very nearly passes out, as you can see his blood pressure start rising, but he barely holds it together. Uh, I literally roll my eyes as I reach into my pack for a healing potion. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Here, use this one. And I toss you the flask of sunshine. Oh, choice. Um, I'll uncork it, and I'll tip the... F Simple flask of sunshine into his gob. 2d4 okay, cool. plus 2. Um, He's going to take 8. Cool. Uh, he steadies himself. And I'll what? return the flask. Yes, speaking of which, Thank I should also heal. I'm going to spend one of these six health potions I've been hoarding. Yay. Cool. Good. Yeah. Is this short rest territory? It could be. I do believe that we should just get the hell out of here. Especially because I only have about an hour. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Yes. Well, what do you mean? Nothing, Brandon. Let's go. Shut up, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> he can All only right. keep it up for an hour. That seems like a while. Well, Brandon, you're a teacher, not a doctor. You don't know your shit. <laughs> Get out of here with that. Sorry, Griffin's mom. Is, <laughs> oh, it's been a while. It has been a while. Is So is Salix in the other room right now? Yeah. Okay. I, I just want to grab Laszlo and Mordecai real quick. Go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, guys, I didn't really think through the whole we have prisoners bit. I just saw a moment to help you out, Mordecai. No. And but what are we doing with him? I was just thinking about that myself. I... I don't know. They have valuable my... information. Take them to Concetri. Your father has a wagon. Throw them in there. Bring them with yeah. us. I just... I'm trying to wrap my head around some of this still. And... I mean, he's... Here's the thing. Family's a big deal. Especially for my people. 
Like, typically, we're on this side of the wall. There's still a lot of prejudice. We're typically all each other have. And there's always been this divide that it's the it's the, the, the shifters on this side and the shifters on that side. And right now, there's this weird schism where I'm both, and my parents are both, and my uncle is... My uncle could have been. It's... But then he's going saying shit like all praise to Mavo and shit like that. That doesn't sit well with me. I just... <sighs> this is weird. <laughs> I don't think we're going to change your uncle right now. No, I don't either. I think he's probably just going to go with us at this point. <sighs> but yeah. but we need to be on the same page here that if uh, if he makes tries to make a break for it, we're probably just going to have to put him down. Oh, Brandon, will you take a few steps over there for me? (laughs) Okay. I'll go see if uh, the the other shifter guy needs help in the other room. Uh, Go go, go ahead. This man is sick. (laughs) Oh, my God. I cannot believe I decided to do this accent. Um, Look, we throw him in your your father's... uh, I almost said van. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Into your father's (laughs) wagon. That is the funniest moment. Your father's wagon, we lock the door, <laughs> and we bring them to Concentric. They have information, and if the worst has to happen, then it is off your hands, and you are not the one who has to do it. I think is the best option. Yeah, I mean, jackass as he might be, I think I'll still take umbrage with killing my own blood. Well, there you are. Now, can we please get the hell out of this mine thing? Yeah. Please um, and thank you. Let's go. Let me just... I'm going to take a second just to clear my head, and I'll, 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 I'll be right with you. I go over to Cenus and the guard, and I want to check their bindings, make sure they're all sure. good. Roll me a sleight of hand. Sure. I almost went to my character sheet for an item that I my character does not have, because it was on Nasus's character sheet. Oh, buddy. Because <laughs> Nasus had cool rope that, when tied, only the the tire can untie it. So I was like, "Let's Ooh, use this." It's really good rope, but I don't have really it. Yeah. So my sleight of hand is at fourteen. Seems good. Cool. Right. So, uh, Cenus, we're gonna take you with us, and you'll get to spend some time with your family. If you try to run, well, I'm pretty sure I can only do that spell once. So sorry, and I look at the cultist and I go deception check. <laughs> Twelve. I mean, I have pass. I have no idea if I can do it again. That's the first time I've ever cast this spell. Jackson's not sure he's lying. Fair enough. I don't know if I can do it again. <laughs> Everything I do is a first. Um, <laughs> but I, I tell them, hey. You're coming with us. We'll keep you alive, but if you run... Alright, let's go. I'm gonna take just a moment to step away from everybody to... Mordecai just needs just a moment to think alone. Okay. I think he just wanders over near the cage where the bear was. It just... Just in... in, in do I passively pick anything up? I'm not actively looking. I just... 15 passive perception. You walk past a couple of corpses on your way mm-hmm. over there, because a couple of dudes did die in that general direction. As you're just kind of clearing your head, you hear a voice that has been oddly quiet the past couple of hours. You're all right, buddy. Oh, no wonder. Oh. I don't know. I mean... I'll be, be honest. Didn't see that one coming. Yeah, yo, me neither. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh... Who? That's a new one. Yeah, I thought my family was odd. Yeah, I didn't until now. Christ. <laughs> <sighs> I I mean, yeah, ultimately I'm I'm fine. I mean, we, we found the people. We stopped. Mm-hmm. Probably the destruction of Concetre. Mm-hmm. Which is a very good thing. <sighs> God, these people are smart. It is the best lie that your people tell, is that the savages on the other side of the wall are chaotic and awful. They're very smart. 
They didn't almost win the war by being idiots. Yeah. Your people didn't have to burn down their entire continent <laughs> just to keep them at bay because they're not very smart. Yeah. Mordecai just makes a ti the tiniest moat of flame in his hand and just like, almost like someone rolling a quarter around their fingers. He's just kind of mm -hmm. playing with it as he's talking to the Wanderer. Just a, an old sure. habit at this point. I'm a little terrified now. Of what? <sighs> this could have been really, really, really bad. And it's, I, I, I can't, this isn't it. This wasn't the big play. This was a big play, sure, but there's, there's gotta be more of them, right? This... This wasn't even the big play we were going up against. We stumbled onto this. I know. <sighs> well, there's... We're, we're one step closer with the general. Mm. We get the forebearer and... Hey, here's a question I've never bothered to ask. Mm? What happens after that? Do we just wait it out? That's gonna depend, really. I'll be honest, I don't remember much. None of us do. Sure. This has happened before, but I don't remember what happened then. I don't really know what happens after this. I know we stick with you, but I think... I think we're going to have to write this out. Once we get everybody together, we might have to be a little bit more proactive. I don't know, I guess that's for the king to tell us. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Roll me an insight check. Oh, gladly. Natural one. You get the impression that... And you don't know how you got this, but you feel like there's... some Something about what he said he's not super cool about. And you don't know if it's the king, you don't know if it's the forebearer, you don't know if it's the way to get out... But something about it is just not sitting well with the Wanderer. But you do know him well enough that if he was going to share that information with you, he would have. Okay, I will... I will come back to the group and be ready to mosey. I do believe that we would honestly be best suited to make our way out the way we came in. Heading on some new direction just has the chance of us stumbling around in the dark for longer. I believe we yeah, should cool head back the other direction, up the well, stairs, cross the lake, and back home we go. Unless, hey, hey, Salix, what are you fighting down there? I got him. All right, great. Is there? Did Rad. you did you see another way out when you went a different way from us? Uh, there's another cave over this way. It looks like it heads up, but fuck, I don't know where it goes. Cool. So we should just backtrack. I mean, that's the safest. All right. Yeah, let's do that then. I didn't know if in your side side quest you just happened to magically find the secret entrance at the end of this Skyrim cave that's always really close <laughs> to the entrance, but you can't get out to until you make it all the way around. I didn't know if you found that one. There's I the haven't lever found behind it. the false wall that opens the slab. Oh, shoot. Right, but you gotta find the chain that does the great and first, it was, and I don't it know was where probably that is. behind that weird wooden wall that we couldn't get past. That's oh, probably. Yeah. Probably. Oh, okay, I guess we're back. Yeah, we broke that. I guess it's we're backtracking. It's a cord where it loops around, but then drops down, so you couldn't get up the first time. Yeah, down yeah. the second time. Yeah. All right, backtracking. It is. Play Skyrim. Um, I do have something I want to do on the way back. Um, as we get to that, mm -hmm. um, like, loft that was full of the crystals, um, sure. I bid everyone to just continue moving, um, okay. and once everyone is clear, I'm just gonna, I wanna cast Shatter up there. Oh, okay, to, cool. To toast Hell everything. Hell yeah. So okay. as we get there, I go, keep moving along, um, 
Fucking scorched earth, baby. Perhaps, it. perhaps put some pep in your step. Things might get loud, and I don't know what's going to happen afterwards. All right. Uh-huh. I, and I, I check my bag to make sure that I still have all of the super powerful psychic ones that I grabbed yep. earlier. Got them. Like, okay, I have this, and I have this, and I have this. Okay, I'm good. I think we have what we need, and I just I move quickly. Cool. After everyone okay. gets clear, I, I just sort of look up at the the, the loft, and I you know, just mm-hmm. very dramatically like lift my finger, like Roy Mustang style, and just like snap, and just hell yeah, boom. Fucking love it. Hell yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh, Just roll damage. Roll double damage because it's inanimate objects that are uh, prone to shattering. Yeah, they are. And I'm using a third level spell, so it, my I, I think I'm adding more damage onto that. So, yep. Oh, baby. Yeah, it'll be an Same. extra D whatever. It's a terrible day for rain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my favorite gift. That is 32. Oh, shaboom. You walk into the middle and you look up and you gauge about how how far up it is you just close your eyes and you snap your fingers in that snap the world above you seems to rip open and where that rip happens a thunderous keening sound screeches out for just a moment and in that moment the world around you is just filled with color as these crystals rain down around you. Not hurting you because they're too yeah. small. You are surrounded by a prismatic rain as these crystals shatter above you. Amelia Zephyr's hands go to his ears and goes, How? Oh, why did I do that? <laughs> oh, it was a mistake. <laughs> what was that noise? Everything's good. Don't apparently. worry about it. It's good. And then I just start walking back towards everyone. Who's talking? Shut up, Brandon. <laughs> oh. Oh. All right. Um, There's a reason I don't you... use those spells ever. It's because you guys are always fighting the people, and I don't want to kill you. <laughs> I know. Fair point. You should have better initiative. As somebody who occasionally plays with someone with spells that doesn't really care about friendly fire, Jeremy. <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate the consideration. Yeah. The f- nine of you now leave the cave. Us four. Uh, yeah. Guys, hey Zach. guys. We're going to need a, a bigger, bigger boat. boat. <laughs> uh. We were all thinking it. You get back to the surface level and you're standing on the island and it is just now beginning to grow light in the distance. Dawn is approaching. How are you going to navigate this boat situation? Probably just ferry people, like, do four and four. Okay. Right? Probably. Yes, I I can't fly anymore. We can just we can just shuttle people across and like push comes to shove I can turn into a dog and swim like <laughs> whoever wants to row go ahead and make me a Constitution saving throw I'll, I got it you got it okay I got it saving throw natural yep. fucking twenty there, there it is, is. Hey, oh, there it is there's my so, twenty Shabow. so you are fueled with just ire at your father at this point. <sighs> Because you're you're coming to terms with him in general, but you're still pretty poosty with him at this moment in time. Oh no, he's getting um, mad, stink eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is on the first load with you and keeps to himself the entire time. Uh, you make it back to town without incident. The three individuals are grateful to you, and unless you have anything specific you need to do with them, they immediately split off to go home and go to bed. But I am seeing Jackson put a finger up in the air. Point of order, not because I want this to be a thing, but because it'll mm-hmm. be hilarious. Yep. I think Laszlo's hour's up. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> in the woods, on the way back to town, Laszlo suddenly the the disguise falls and it just kind of falls off like a mask in Majora's mask is the way I picture it. It's nice. just like 
after the hour, the Laszlo face solidifies and falls off and disappears before it hits the ground. When this happens, I go, oh, look over there. And then I cast another one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Roll me a deception check. Okay, uh, you know I'm good at those. Use the ring. <laughs> That's a natural fucking 20. <laughs> Hey. Hey. Alright, everybody looks over and the disguise is maintained. Hell yeah. Alright. Ah, I feel reinvigorated. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Wink, wink, wink. wink. Alright, so <laughs> we'll get back to town. Salix, why don't you take our. Pri- you'll take. You and uh, Mordecai maybe take our prisoners back to the wagon and get everything all hitched uh-huh. up. And then, Laszlo, maybe you and I should uh, quickly check in with the mayor, let him know everything's good, and we're leaving. Sounds like a good idea. We leave immediately. Mm -hmm. What time of day is it right now? It is very early morning. We're talking like maybe 6 a.m. tops. All right. Yeah. So we we dungeoned through the night. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. It was a very long night. Pretty sleepy, too. Very long night. I agree. We need to... Well, how long was the trip to Concetra? It was like half a day, right? Yep. Fuck. We could make it by nightfall. Yeah. I mean, we'll make it by like afternoon we're just gonna be exhausted yeah let's go we need to get back we should get back as quickly as possible the general is safer there we're safer there agreed 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 and i don't want to sleep here with two prisoners yeah yeah <laughs> so jackson and i when we get to town we like walk them over to the the pub whatever it's called mm-hmm. i keep forgetting Wherever the, wherever, the song log. The song The song log. The log. And, and the, in and respite. We, like, push and the respite. doors open and huddle the three people that were missing in. And we go, Mayor, we found them. Have a good one. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not a cultist, right? All right. The mayor is standing in, like, behind the bar, but he's got a nightgown and a sleeping cap on. And he's nursing a coffee and absolutely spit take. Ta-ta! What? Oh, we're very good at what we do. We're the specialists. They call us in when stuff needs to get done. You're welcome. We'll send you a bill. Bye. Bill. And, and then we leave, and the moment I step outside, I drop Laszlo and just, oh, my <laughs> fucking God. <laughs> yeah, maybe next time we come up with uh, a less convoluted set of lies. I think we need to learn from this. I, 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 I believe you are correct. Now let's go, please. <laughs> yes. They should have the horses hooked up to the wagon by now. We've bought them enough time. Wink. Cut to. Are you going to be taking the prisoners or the horses? Oh, the prisoners. I'm not letting my dad and my uncle near each other. <laughs> Good call. Roll me a persuasion. Can I make an intimidation? Yeah. That works. I'm proficient in that one, so it's not a negative one. I'll take an 18. Okay, yeah, you give the two prisoners a solid glare, and they both just walk up into the cart. The uh, prisoner that you nearly murdered, uh, you have not heard a single word of the common tongue kind of come out of his mouth. It is all the wild tongue. Cool. Um, your uncle does seem to be about as fluent as you could be living on the other side of the wall, though. Yeah. All right. Um, and you shut the door and latch it pretty quickly. The four of you are kind of riding on the outside of the cart, and you've got your horses back together, and you take off. Yeah, we do. Um, it does take about four hours for you to uh, make it back. At that point, it's probably around noon. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, 11 o'clock, 10, 11, somewhere in there. I would like everybody to roll me a constitution saving throw, yes. though, because yep. it uh, you have been up all night. 18 plus 1, 19. All right, Zephyr's doing well. Also a 19. Boom. Mordecai's all right. Roll a 19, Jackson. Roll a 19. Uh, 16. Wow. So the three of you are riding along well enough. Salix is definitely having a hard time keeping his shit together, though. Is he, like, driving the wagon? Yeah, he's driving the wagon, and you can see him. It's like driving up the turnpike, and there, you just haven't seen anything for, like, eight hours. And you haven't had to turn the wheel left or right. You're just going straight. Exactly. And he is just doing everything he can to keep himself awake. And eventually, 
he starts singing. Mordecai, it's, it's a song you know. This was kind of a, a, a song that mom and dad would sing around the house as you were growing up. But sure. uh, the two boys, uh, the two other boys, I should say, you've never heard this song in your life. Zephyr's going to try. Um, well, first and foremost, he's going to be like, all right, everyone hold. Uh, just because Salix is tired. He's going to Zephyr. I'm going to like hitch my horse just like to the back of the wagon. So it's just sort of trailing behind. Sure. And I'm going to get up into the front of the wagon with Salix and like take the reins. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm just going to drive the cart because he's a sleepy boy. Yep, fair enough. He doesn't even fight you. It's like, ah, thanks. It's been a while since I've pulled an all-nighter like this. I, you've, it's fine. It is a, uh, we're all tired. Let's just get back. Mm-hmm. It's a young if, man's game. And uh, if he begins it's... singing again, I think Sophia's just going to, like, whistle along. Mm-hmm. And just, uh, yeah. Go ahead and roll me a performance check. I want Chase to sing this song. Salud, Chase. Chase. 12 plus 4, 16. You're able to keep up with him pretty well. Uh, it's uh, not a terribly complicated song. It's kind of got the cadence of like an Irish drinking song or a sailing song. Cool. I think Mordecai has to fight the urge to almost subconsciously sing along. Probably more out of oh, yeah. favor to mom than dad, but he's almost kind of grouchy about it because it's... It's a family it's a good thing. Song. He, well, yeah, but like it's a family thing, and like that, that's got a weird taste right now. Yeah, for Mordecai. No, that makes sense. I'm just real grouchy. <laughs> Takes you about four hours to get back. The tower is in sight. Probably about an hour before you're even close to it. Uh... You uh, ride up in the back way, the same way that you left, and you park your uh, the wagon and the horses in the in the requisition stables where you originally got them uh, just a couple of short days ago. and Thanks, Joe. um, Very cautiously let the guys out of the back of the the wagon, like SWAT style, like open the door. They are not fighting. They are defeated men. You have them by their hands and you lead them into the tower. Salix explains to the guards that you meet what, you know, the the rough of what happened, not going into a whole lot of fine details. Mm -hmm. And the two prisoners are quickly led away down. Fair. We don't need them for the debrief. That's fine. Nope. They'll be taken care of. Cool. I grab the, whoever the guy is we hand him over to. Mm -hmm. I just look him square in the eye. And I want to pull rank real hard. I hand him over. I look at. I look him dead in the eyes, and I say, "Now, son, you've never had a prisoner as important as this one right here." And I point to to Cenus. I swear to every single one of the patrons, if anything happens to him or he gets out, I know where you live, and I will make your life a living hell. <laughs> Roll me intimidation at advantage. Twenty fucking one. The guy stands up in order of magnitude straighter and just gives you a single skirt nod and then grabs him and with confidence and fear leads this man deep into the bowels of the tower. Can I have a quick, can I have a quick retcon? Right before that happens, um... Is there, this is, this is kind of a weird question, is there anything on Cenus like, uh, like, any sort of accessory trinkets something i i'm looking for something to add to my charm necklace absolutely this feels important and if there's if there's something there i want to either just take it from him or cenus has um his hair tied back into braids Uh and those braids have um uh beads and bones kind of woven in them um and uh, the simplest thing it does seem to be to just cut off uh, a lock of hair, a, you know, close to the bottom, mm-hmm. and uh, take one of the beads. I'm gonna do that. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna yeah, so... with, without without even without even saying anything. I mm-hmm. just bef- bef- right before he is shipped off, I'm just gonna mm-hmm. walk over to him, take the knife I surely have, like just the the RP boot knife, of course, the RP boot knife. Put a hand on his shoulder, turn his back to me. And just snip and okay. take, take a bead and just push him. 
You grab uh, a tiny, very plain looking bead. It's brown, but when you kind of look at it in the light, it glints and there's glaze and a very intricate design. Cool. The four of you, with uh, the three of you and Salix, head back up and you and you take the lifts all the way back up to where the colonel's office is. Colonel K. Coppersot. Correct. Coolest colonel in the world. Mm -hmm. Takes a little while for you to get up there. Is there anything that you three wanted to talk about or say before you got back up there? Mordecai's not saying anything, but just body language wise, he is... (laughs) He is exhausted, confused, and anxious. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you ever done that thing in an elevator, especially like you're like real tired and you get in an elevator and you just like lean against a wall and just kind of put your head back? Uh, I, th- I think that's exactly what <laughs> Zephyr's just doing. The three of you are doing that, but there's no walls here. So you're doing it kind of on each other and you're just kind of <laughs> like try leaning. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That art, that moment. That's what I want. Oh, boys. Mm-hmm. And, like, right before the doors open, there's just a heavy, heavy sigh from Mordecai. Yeah. Hey, Mordecai. (sighs) Mordecai, before we uh, go in there, we should probably be on the same page. Are you up for doing a patron taking in right now? I'm not sure I have much of a choice. Well, let let me help you out, buddy. And I hand you a crimson bovine. (laughs) <laughs> How we don't all do you have left? It. I have three left. Do you drink it? Oh, I absolutely drink it. All right. Roll that d20. Please get wings. 17. Oh. oh. Someday close. somebody's going to get those damn <sighs> wings and they're going to fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't care about technology in this world. This thing has a pop tab. Of course. I... Crack the pop tab, and yeah, I just <laughs> chug it like a fucking frat boy. Like, <laughs> All right, you instantly feel at least back to normal. Wait, wait, wait. Do you crush it on your noggin? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, he's he's not an animal. You, say you, did, you said you crushed it like a, fr- like a frat boy. I punch my keys into the side, and then I <laughs> shut it. I cleave it in half with my battle axe and slurp it up off the floor. Like he bites into it with his teeth, <laughs> like it's a juicy apple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Mordecai, you're ready uh, now. Yeah, and I like, now you're ready to take this patron. Just, Let's do this. As I kind of just recover, I'll produce flame again real quick and just f- play with it for a minute and just fizzle it out. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. All right, we're gonna sleep right. for a very long time after this. Oh, yes. All right. You all ascend into Colonel Coppersot's office. When you open the door, she stands at the ready. She has been told that you were coming. Her face is set in stone. Salix, without looking at her, moves to a door in the side of the room, and she reaches for a plain and rusted blade above it. As his fingers touch it, magic pours from him into it repairing it and making it shine with a brilliant, frosty glow. He steps aside, and he opens the door for you. Stairs ascend up into a space that shouldn't be possible with the construction of the tower. Ah, neat. What do you do? Uh, I I watch all this happen as I'm stiffly at attention. I'm tired, but I'm at attention. I watch this, I'm like, Hi, Colonel, nice to see you too. It's done then? Yeah. It's done. We also have a couple of prisoners <laughs> that uh, are downstairs and probably have a lot of very valuable information. Is that a chair I'll I can sit in? <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like, but you should probably tend to the general situation. No, he can do that. I'll just sit here. No, oh, come on, buddy. We do this, we do this all together. You know the drill. Yeah. Okay. And you'll be very bored for the rest of the podcast. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> the GM can't break you if you don't go through the door. Oh no. <laughs> hey, well, Chase, I don't hey Chase, I don't want to go through the door. <laughs> yeah, the ages three are fucking good out here. <sighs> okay. 
Hey guys, what if we just defect? Can we, we just, just stop it right Can here? we just let's just Okay, well, okay, first things first. Don't. First things first, we save the game. Right. We save the game right F5. here. F5. Yep, F5, quick save, we're good. Okay. Now what okay, do that, we do? That first episode, I said that we should just say fuck it and go to Cabo. I think that's a good option. I still don't know to this day what the fuck Cabo is. It's like a place. It's like an Isn't island it? in Cabo. It's like yeah, it's like a, it's like a resort island. Yeah. If y'all listen back to that first episode and the silence after Zach says that, that's me going <laughs> doing the mental math in my head of what did I hear? <laughs> Cabo. <laughs> what the fuck is Cabo? Yeah, Cabo. Cabo. It's like a spring break uh, resort type place. Sure. Yeah. You could have said Malibu and everyone would have got it, but nah. Palm Springs. South Beach. So, you know, normal place. Fort Lauderdale. Austin, Texas. Caraco. That's not a place. Alaska. <laughs> anyway, back to the podcast. Yes. All right. All right. So we all save the game, and then we go up the <sighs> stairs. Yep. Okay. Let's, let's do this. Mordecai. Yeah. As you're walking up the stairs for what seems like ages, you finally look up, and you find yourself in a familiar, ruined stone staircase. The rich scent of soil and dew fills your nostrils as you and your brother follow your father through the outlying forest near the wall. Despite the height and the heat of the wall, it's impossible to see this deep into the woods. Your father moves ahead of you, and uh, with your brother Kerut, you look behind you. There's Benjamin. Your party of shifters, changelings, and goliaths moves through the forest in quiet camaraderie when your father stops and holds up a hand. Something's wrong. He shakes his head, and it's like he's trying to shake off sleep. We need to find cover. Something's happening. Kerut argues. But if we don't show up now, Salix says. Jackson. You move up the staircase. The end of the stairs seems to always be just in sight. As you move, a heaviness fills your body and makes it harder to move quickly. The others outpace you. You pause for a moment to catch your breath. You open your eyes to the butt of a spear at the back of your knees, knocking you forward. You're a human. You're at the base of the wall, and you're looking up into the eyes of Captain Church. He smirks at you and he offers his spear to help you stand. You reject his help and stand on your own. He rolls his eyes and continues the drill. As the captain continues to shout, horns start to scream out from the top of the wall. An attack. Zephyr. The prolonged stair climbing was never your forte, at least not before your time on the wall. Though you start out at the tail of the party, you quickly move past your fellows. The place of the warlock was always at the top of the wall, and though you detest long stairs if you can avoid them, you did develop a knack for keeping pace. A familiar warm breeze crosses your face as you cross the staircase. You stand at the top of Greynor's wall, on the top of B-34 specifically, and you look out over the bisected landscape. On one half, the deepest greens you've ever seen, and the other holding the barren landscape of your home. The wall itself is impressive, massive in construction, even if some of the parts of it are showing its age. A horn blares out, a sound you thought you may go your entire tour without hearing. When the forest comes alive before you, you watch as an army of shifters, dragonborn, and animals rush an unprepared line. Mordecai. The forest fills with noise. Your party turns and is suddenly caught as a wave of fauna rushes towards the wall. Your party breaks. Taking a moment to look back, you see that your father hasn't moved. His hands are still on his head, flinching and blinking as if he's caught in a fog. Your brother, Kerut, tries to pull him along. Benjen is at your arm, urging you to come with him. The forest continues to fill with noise as a wave of cold washes over you. What do you do? Or rather, what did you do? Oh, God. I... I'm overwhelmed. I... I latch on to the closest thing to me, and that's Benjen. You grab Benjen's arm, and the two of you take cover in a nearby cave. 
Jackson. All of your fellows drop their training weapons and pick up real ones. You move to the barricades just in time for the first volley of arrows to hit. You hold fast, and you feel the barrier behind you shudder as the first wave of savages hit. I pull my bow off of my back that I'm not very good at, but standard issue, and you stick the end of the arrow in the tar and hope for the best. You didn't see it happen. All you know is that one moment, Captain Church is standing there, giving orders, and the next he is on the ground dead. A wave of cold washes over you as you see your brothers in arms start to break. What did you do? With the wall crumbling around us and no one yelling orders, I I broke the chain of command and I ripped off Captain Church's insignia and started giving my own orders. The men just needed someone to listen to that day. You run over, you grab his medal that he wears around his neck, and you give it one sharp tug, and it goes off, and you very quickly fold it into your uniform. And that's enough for them. You start giving orders. After about an hour of holding the line, you order a retreat back into the tower. Zephyr, you stop for a moment as a wave of cold washes over you. Beneath you, you can see the line break. A party of Goliath has, has made a hard push towards the wall. You can stop them. You can bring down part of the wall on top of them. You know you can. To one side of you, your fellow warlocks and mages loyal to the crown are bravely defending their home. The wall beneath them is weak. The wall on the other side of you is empty and weak as well, but you can see movement on the ground. Friendly movement. What do you do? <laughs> because I love you. I don't think you good. do. Because it's good. <laughs> because I love our listeners. You can you can go back to Adventure Verse League anytime you want, Zach. I know. <laughs> I'm going tomorrow. Um, it crosses his brain maybe for a split second, um, but then decides that the pros outweigh the cons and just begins launching volley after volley of Eldritch Blast into this crumbling piece of the wall until it finally gives away. So you you risk the fellows on the ground. Mm-hmm. Okay. You do that. Mordecai, it takes about an hour for the forest to quiet down. You and Benjen eventually surface, and you after looking around, are able to find most of your party. Most of them are still alive. You lost some. It's your father, of course, that you find last holding your brother. In the rush to the wall, your father just had lost himself. Something he never really tells you what in the coming months and years, but he he was unable to move, unable to act in that moment. And your brother found a place for him to hide but it cost him his life can I tell you something yeah I think that moment when Mordecai refines dad holding a dead K root I think that's whether internally or externally I'm not sure what that looks like right now that's Mordecai's first rage that's where yeah. that come that's where that comes from yeah you were a scout up until that point yeah that's Absolutely, every that, that is the fragment that is kind of held on to. Jackson, you can skip me. I just don't. I just don't want to have feels. No, keep. <laughs> no. Oh. Oh. Oh no. This isn't for you. <laughs> this is for the audience. Jackson, suffer. You. It takes. A full day for the army to realize that you are not, in fact, Captain Church. It's when they're cleaning up the bodies and pulling those uh, who didn't make it back in that they realize that uh, uh, that this man, this asshole, is dead and somebody has his uh, his insignia. 
you are taken to the highest authorities in your local platoons that none of them can find fault with what you did. At the end of the day, you made a call, and that call probably saved significantly more lives than it cost. And it did cost lives. Men under your command died. At the end, that's all right. It was going to happen, and you saved more than you lost. Zephyr, you are awarded full honors for your actions. You did, in fact, kill those uh, Goliaths that were making a rush towards the wall. You also did kill your fellow soldiers, who, upon further inspection, were mages turning rogue and making a break for the forest. Uh, Zephyr, what, like, is that like a, some sort of ceremony or something? Like where that would happen? There is a very quiet ceremony that takes place between uh, pretty much just the people that are receiving awards on that day. The mages uh, kind of receive rewards and uh, commendations separately from everyone else. You uh, receive your award from your commanding officer, another warlock of the deep. And as you leave the award ceremony, you can actually see the possessions of those that you crushed being burned. Records of them being stricken. They went AWOL in the time of need. Um, Zephyr threw whatever badge he gets on that fire. The Iron Star goes into the fire. All three of you wake up on your backs. Your eyes open slowly. The sky swirls in a dark gray and blue. Clouds are orbiting around a single perfect yellow moon hung in the sky. It's cold. And as you stand, you feel the hard cracked ground beneath your feet. It's sturdy, but long since given over to the cold of wherever you are. You stand on a rocky plain with a single hill in the middle. A massive burly figure sits on the hill, horned and muscular, looking up at the moon. That's why I wanted to stay in that chair. <sighs> oh, get up, you big baby. Come on. On your feet, boys. We don't have to do Ugh. anything. We just have to be here. Is Salix here? No. He's already done this. <laughs> uh, it's been a while. Okay. I'm going to get up and start marching toward the hill. The three of you walk towards the figure, and as you move, you come to a realization. This field is not filled with rocks, but with weapons and armor. Thousands of helms, breastplates, and swords litter the broken ground. Some of them are familiar to you, though most of them are nearly alien in design and ornamentation. You approach the hill, and towering above you at well over twice any of your heights is a demon. A beautiful and terrible horns curl from his head, black hair cascades down his back. His perfect blue-gray skin is broken only by blackened drapery that he wears as a toga. You see, soldiers... The duty of the general was not about the heat of battle or the fury of combat. It's about the choices we make. More importantly, it's about the choices we made and living with whatever happens next. Each of you have taken lives into your hands and lost them for the greater good of your home. The general stands, and he picks up a banner. The banner is strange, and it shifts to different colors and standards every time you blink or look away. He extends a massive hand. As with all tough calls, Mordecai, the only way out is through. The fear gives you a nod. You got this, buddy. I, gi I give you just a little push. You get this one, I'll get the last one. <laughs> Mordecai, he claps his hands together, and I cast Flame Blade, and I unpull my hands and the scimitar of fire appears in my hands. The heat of battle is what I thrive in. You'll understand that. 
and I'll toss the sword into my the flame blade into my left hand, and I'll reach out and grasp his. Mordecai, you feel a cold blast of wind envelop you as all the clouds in the sky rush down to cover the pair of you. You are going to take some damage. Not much. Good thing you we take healed. Eight cold damage. How much? Sorry. Eight cold damage. I'm dead. I'm kidding. As the wind clears, Mordecai is covered in a fine film of ice and slush. As you brush it away, you see a tattoo. Splintering lines of frost forming medals and accolades climbing your arm. Hmm. All right. Well, that didn't seem too bad. Oh, God. Why are you blue? I don't know. <laughs> and I'm just going to wave the flame blade over myself to go. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Zephyr sits there like press agitation and is like, warm up, warm up, warm up. <sighs> and the three of you are taking this moment to admire the tattoo and try and warm up your companion. When you examine your surroundings, you notice that the moon seems to be glowing larger. Quickly, this light envelops all of you. It's painless, but it forces you to shut your eyes. The air around you grows warm, and when you open your eyes, you are standing back in the middle of Coppersot's office. That's no moon. Mm. Mm. Okay. I'm very tempted to end the episode on that. <laughs> no, you can't. I love our listeners more than that, though. You can't. They deserve better, Ryan. No. <laughs> they probably deserve better, but this is what they should expect. <sighs> That's fair. You are standing in the middle of Coppersot's office. Uh, Salix and Coppersot are standing right there, um, right where you left them. Salix is like, it's done then. I just hold up my arm. <laughs> Um, he holds up his arm, matching tattoos. Oh, gross. What? It's super cute. Oh, don't. don't mm, you say those <laughs> words again, and I swear to God, I will actually kill you. Well, bedtime. Absolutely. We actually have quarters here in the tower for you. Uh, if you'd like, you can leave in the morning. Or if you'd like to take a day here, you're welcome to do that as well. We need to move on. There is only one patron left. Have If you can, uh, have things prepared for us to leave. Uh, horses, whatever you have. Coppersot nods. The men have been enjoying your company's uh, uh, company here, but uh, I'll let them know that they are to be ready to leave at first light. With that in mind, actually, uh, Master Johnson? Yes? A this may sound strange, but there's someone below that would like to see you. Who? It'll be easier to show you. Okay. Let's go. Game. Ah! Uh, ow! Thank you for joining us here on Another Path. You can find our website and merch store at anotherpathpodcast.com, on Twitter at anotherpathpod, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash anotherpathpodcast. You can support our efforts by donating at our Patreon at patreon.com slash anotherpath. And this very special thanks to our donor, Nathan N. Or by giving us a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher will let you. You can find me on Twitter at TQLoudly, Ryan at Ryan underscore Albrecht, Griffin at Griffcold, and Zach at that guy Zach Rob. We'll be back in two weeks with a new episode. And until then, remember that nothing can sometimes be as scary as something. <laughs>